Greetings everyone, the Good Sir Knight here, and today we're going to be asking the difficult question of should you buy a Polar Star? Now there's lots of pros and cons to a Polar Star, although generally you're going to hear mostly the pros, and not too many people are going to be bringing up the cons, so let's go ahead and we'll get started. Let's go with the pros. Everyone, most people know the pros already. You get to use a gas tank, particularly a large one. You get instantaneous trigger response. You can do, well I prefer 45 rounds per second just because It'll outdo most electronic guns, most gas guns, but it's not so absurd as being like 60, 90 rounds per second, which is where a lot of the uh, negative overkill from Polar Stars comes in, not to mention the jewel creep and other nonsense people like to get away with. So, a few things to consider. Getting a Polar Star is going to make a lot of people think that you're kind of an asshole, so that's something to keep in mind. So, that's the first thing. You get a lot of, uh, well, mostly the firepower. You can do three round burst which was only really possible with gas guns for the longest time until they get, started getting that, uh, so that new system, system or whatnot, and you could do three round bursts electronically. Pretty cool. But ultimately, the Polar Star is like the high performance, well, I guess we're going to have to call it Speedball. There's really no way around it, which is unfortunate. I didn't really want to do Speedball, but after the gearbox initially broke and in the earlier days when I still know how to tech guns, I was like, ah, oh, we'll get a Polar Star. Well, Kabola stars are pretty cool. For one, they make that loud, satisfying tuk 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 noise, and that makes me happy. But you still get the uh, magazine capacities of an AEG. We have 140 round mags here, which is pretty absurd, but when you're playing against a lot of other kids who have 500 round drum mags and they all have high cycles, you kind of want to have some form of a competitive edge with them, because you still want to win to some degree, right? <laughs> I mean, I like to win, but you know. So, you have a few considerations outside of just that. So the sling is one of the least things to really worry about. It's going to be better on a gas blowback system, but the key problems, you have all these cool things. You fill the gas tank, it'll last, the massive gas tanks last forever, but you got a lot of cool things going on. But I ran into one key problem while trying to run my IFAC and handgun and all that stuff and keep everything more mil simmy, I guess, and that is this hose. Oh my god. This hose will be the bane of your existence if you're trying to run a plate carrier or anything. More than like just a really lightweight rig. This is definitely a very, I usually call it more of a glass cannon build. You're not going to get any armor bonuses from wearing a plate carrier in airsoft anyway, most of the time. But, but, you try to start putting things on with this hose going on. Oh my god, so we've had to do a lot of modification. I haven't modified my gear a lot more than I wanted to to try to compensate for this hose, and even now it's not perfect. For example, I've had to remove the holster and the handgun because the hose naturally likes to sit right about here, right where the grip would be. So that means when I'm trying to move the handgun up, it's catching the hose and it's going, eh, I'm going, uh. then the guy's like, oh, he's not shooting at me, pop, pop, and you're like, ah. It's the exact same noise too. You can hear it, can't you? But no, so that's the key first concern overall. So I'm gonna say Polar Stars are gonna be more for like a very dedicated weapon or more of a support role. I think they do better with uh, machine guns and whatnot, honestly. Because if you're carrying the machine gun, you're probably not carrying too much else. And your whole goal is just to put down a lot of reliable suppressing fire. Now the reason I got the Polar Star, outside of my gun just being busted, is because it had the reliability and everything else. I haven't tried one before, ultimately. I've had gas guns. And also didn't know how to take those back in the day, so the seals would break and be like, yeah, and this is a lot of weight in magazines, and I've learned a lot, <laughs> I'll say, between now and uh, several years ago, so. Polar Stars have a few, a lot of advantages, but this hose, even right now, I've moved the IFAC as far back as possible, and the hose still likes to kind of like weave under there. So when I try to left shoulder transition, eh, I guess it's still okay, but some of the times you're just going to have all manner of problems, and it sucks. It absolutely sucks. It's a huge pain. To the point where, I mean, I might keep this, but I'm not going to be able to run it with my uh, plate carrying all the stuff I really want to, so... That's kind of a key concern and a good deal of a bummer, but... Go ahead, we'll disconnect that. And there's really one way that I found that you can really effectively run a Polar Star, and that's how most people like to play Airsoft anyway, so... Kind of works out for them, but I want to have my fact back here, have my handgun up here, and still keep everything else relatively light, but 
with the hose catching on everything. I used to have the IFAC up here and the hose was catching on that all the time. That was a huge issue. I also can't carry my grenades up here, so that to stay in a dump pouch. But it's a few concerns to bear in mind. So, what you may find yourself having to do... Ah, uh, excuse me for one second. You stop that right now. What you may find yourself having to do is... I'm going to have to do the map pack version. So the map pack works out pretty well because you can fit the entire gas tank in there. Just thunk, throw that in there, you throw your hose in there, you get all that stuff going. Actually, let me go ahead. This is all I had in there, by the way. I just had it linked to the top for uh, demonstrative purposes only. But we're going to move this. We'll set that right about there. That looks good to me. Come on. And yeah, it's going to be the right way. So what you're going to end up doing is you take like a lighter pack, like this one, and you're just going to want to run that. Ugh, I didn't loosen the straps. Mistakes were made. Ugh. One second. But yeah, so the thing you're going to end up doing is if you want to still run a Polar Star, in the end, what you need to do is you need to get yourself some type of backpack. I prefer modular assault packs, personal preference. Then you need to come over here, and the only other thing you're really going to be able to do... If it stops fighting me, it's not going to. Okay. The only other thing you're going to want to do is get a uh, leg panel. So that didn't work, it's not in there like I thought it was. Get a leg panel, you run that onto your belt, and push your magazines down here. And you can still run a radio, I'd say. Just link it uh, back here in one of these pouches. And yeah, you can still have a radio. And this is going to be the only real effective way to run a Polar Star, because now I can link the hose in here. Still, I can be able to run a handgun the way I want to, but now you have a very effective way. There's no straps to catch the sling either, so hose is free. And now you have like a very lightweight sort of I guess a reconnaissance, super lightweight to the build, so I can run around with the Polar Star. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I have extra magazines here on this HSGI leg panel that's probably in there somewhere that I should have grabbed. And yeah, now you can pop, 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 pop. Left transition, pop, 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 pop. You can move a lot faster and effectively. So the key, I'm going to say, my pro tip here for running a Polar Star, is just have a backpack, preferably a modular salt pack. You can probably fit in a GMR mini-map. Haven't tried it, but it's an option. Any type of backpack of your choosing. And then you just run a little leg panel of mags. You could probably still get a chest rig going, but again, you gotta keep that right side clear. And you're also probably not gonna want a handgun. Handguns are very nice, but you're just, this hose, man, this hose. Now, there are other solutions as well. My buddy, uh, Caboose up in uh, Mainland, he actually just got himself a buttstock uh, gas tank, which is apparently super, super, super useful. So that would be another cool alternative, but yeah, originally I got into this. The main thing I actually wanted to do, I still want to do, is go get a gas blowback M4, so I can move this sling onto there, probably put a uh, knockoff L can on it, and have a simple gas blowback system. Now, of course, you're trying to stay competitive with people running high cycles, so that's something to bear in mind. But, gas blowback is really, you just gotta land one BB ultimately, right? So, a few extra rounds for a bit of suppression and work, and ultimately, the point of rifles is supposed to be to well, hit the target. You got 30 rounds, so you get a few pop-up, or if you hit the target, dot, and then make sure they know they're hit, so that maybe they're not throwing their, hits, their hands up and calling hit just yet. You go pop, 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 and they eventually... They either that first one hit, the second one hit... Uh, okay, yeah, definitely. He's throwing those rounds in, so... Shoot until the target calls a hit. This is basically the point of the story. You don't need to go full auto retard with a Polar Star. But yeah, ultimately if you're trying to run this, a very lightweight setup is what you're going to be looking for. If you're trying to do something more milsimy, I would probably stick to gas blowbacks. And if you don't mind doing the tech work, you can still use an AEG. The benefit to gas blowbacks is the 30 round magazines and a bolt kicking back and forth. It's just all sorts of awesome sexy, so a few things to bear in mind, I don't know. Like, I do like the Polar Star, but 
Ultimately, now that I can tech the guns and whatnot, I might turn this back into an AEG as soon as I can get around to getting another gearbox. And I'll do something with the Polar Star portion. I don't know. It's nice to have as a uh, counter hard, high cycle, everyone else is like, oh, we'll do the game full auto, and all the other kids are just like, da 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 except for 500 rounds. Frustrating. But yeah, so ultimately I'd probably turn this back into an AG, because AGs are nice. But I need to get myself a gas blowback M4. So yeah, ultimately, purpose of the video is Polar Star isn't just going to be a straight upgrade. You're going to have considerations that if you don't bear in mind prior to purchasing one, uh, well, you're going to have to find out some find something to do. So that's all I wanted to talk to you guys about. Was just a few considerations for buying a Polar Star. Maybe reasons not to immediately jump into it without doing a bunch of reading. They are really cool. Don't get me wrong. They're cool. They're definitely pretty. They're definitely awesome and reliable. But you're going to have hoses and things flailing around and uh, they can ultimately ruin the experience so that's all I have for you guys hope you enjoyed the video cheers everyone stay safe stay chivalrous um, and uh, make sure you eat your daily doses of pizza